the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. I'd like for this audience, I've asked permission to sing one verse of amazing grace. I want you to sing it. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Ah, me, sin, grace, ah, sweet, the sound that see. thankful to the God of our being for this another exalted privilege of coming together again this evening for a further study of his will. I want to express my gratitude and appreciation to the fine brother who have directed our devotional services here this afternoon. Brother Winston for the wonderful petition sent up on our behalf before the throne of grace yes, and to each of you for your presence here this evening. As I look across the audience, I witness faces who have not missed a single service. Yes, and I want you to know that your presence here this evening has been a source of inspiration to me and I'm sure to those who are responsible for this effort here uh, each night. I want to express our gratitude and appreciation to all those persons who've been visiting with us every night. This meeting was pitched with you in mind so that you might learn what your duty is to God and what God's will is for your life. And I trust that this will be the evening in which you'll make that decision to take a stand for Jesus Christ. Do you not know that when we stand before God in the judgment, there will be three books? Somebody looking at me funny, but that's right. There will be three books in the judgment. In Revelations, the chapter is 20, and let's begin reading at verse 12. John will exile on the Isle of Patmos John says, and I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, God, plural, and the books were open. Hold it right there. That means more than one, doesn't it? Somebody, brother, even what are the two books that are there? The first book will be the book of deeds. Regardless of how little you may think of it, Human beings are the only creatures God made who are answerable to God and responsible to God for their conduct while living here upon this earth. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 10, the Bible says, For we all must. And understand that must is one of the strongest words in the English language. It's not something that's optional. It's not maybe so if you want to or not, but it's imperative. We all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ. There to give an account of the deeds done in the body, whether they be good or whether they be evil. In Ecclesiastes, 
chapter 12 and verse 14, the Bible says, For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing. Amen. So the first book will be the book of deeds. Yes, the second book is going to be God's word. Amen. That's the second book. Pick up the third book there, Brother Maxwell. And another book was, and opened, another book was opened, which is, the book of life. which is the book of life. Now hold it right there. In Revelations chapter 21, and the verse is number 27, this book is referred to as the Lamb's book of life. As the Lamb's book of life. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. Read. And death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. Notice now. And whosoever, regardless of who you are, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Whosoever was not found written in the book of life were cast into the lake of fire. We can see the need of our names being recorded in the book of life we expect to make heaven our home. But how many in this audience do you know of who added children to the family roster prerequisite to birth? No. You add that child at birth and not before birth. So now in order for your name to be recorded in the book of life, you must be born into the family. And the church is the Lord's family. Now if you've not been born into the family, it means your name haven't been recorded in the book of life. And the Bible says if your name is not recorded in the book of life, that you're going to be cast into the lake of fire, eternal hell. I believe you can see that. Jesus Christ in the course of Caesarea Philippi made a promise. After Peter had acknowledged him to be the Christ, the son of the living God, he said, Blessed art thou, Simon Bajona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. If Jesus Christ actually fulfilled this promise, and built the church as he promised to do. And if that church exists in this, this fair land of ours today, yes, there should be some way for us to identify it separate and apart from every other existing institution in the world today. Yes, the subject tonight, marks of identity. All right. All right. Marks of identity. Now, if I'm looking for the right church, I don't go to the Armanek. If I'm looking for the right church, I don't necessarily go to the telephone directory. Right, right. If I'm looking for the right church, I must look in the right place, and the right place is the Bible, the Word of God. I need to find out who is the R who, who built the church, and who is its founder? Yes, sir. Turn to First Chronicles chapter 17, and I want to start reading at verse number 10. In Psalms 127 and verse number 1. Somebody hold uh, First Timothy chapter 3 and verse 15, and somebody else hold Hebrews chapter 3 and the verses number 2. And I'll read that after a while. Let us know. First Chronicles chapter 17. And verse number 10, and since the time 
that I command the judges to be over my people Israel. Moreover, I will subdue all thine enemies. Furthermore, I tell thee that the Lord will build thee an house. Keep reading. It shall come to pass when thy days be expired that thou must go to be with thy father. Read. I will raise up thy seed after thee, which shall build thy son. I will establish my kingdom. Read. He shall build me in house. I will establish his throne forever. Notice, I love this phrase. I will be his father. And he, and he shall be, shall be my son. And I oh, whoever the bill is, God said, I will be his father. Yes. And he shall be my son. Jesus Christ, God's son, is the only authorized builder. Yes. That's right, my friend. And the Bible says in Psalms, 127 and verse 1. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that building. This lets me know this afternoon that Constantine may have been a good man, but Constantine labored in vain. King Henry VIII may have been a good man, but King Henry VIII labored in vain. Martin Luther labored in vain. John Calvin labored in vain. Charles Taz Russell labored in vain. Mason and Jones labored in vain. John Smite labored in vain. Ellen G. White Labor and oh, I could call the road this evening. The Bible says, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that building. In Acts 2 and verse 36, Jesus Christ was raised from the dead and made both Lord and Christ. And he said himself, I will build my church. A lot of people, I can't understand that. Let's see something. Turn to Acts the 16th chapter and start reading at verse 14 and you tell me whose house. Acts 16 and verse 14 and a certain woman named Lydia, named Lydia a seller of purple of, of the city of Thyatira which worship God heard us whose heart the Lord opened and she attended, and she attended the thing, thing which was, which was spoken of Paul and when she was baptized and her household, and her household she besought us, she besought us saying if you have judged if you've judged me, me with faith of the Lord come, come into my house whose house she didn't say Lydia's house. She just said, come into my house. The average intelligent person, knowing that Lydia being the speaker, it meant Lydia's house. But let's see where they went. Read verse 40 there, Brother Doolin. And they went out of the prison and entered into the house of Lydia. See that? They knew exactly where to go. She said, come into my house. And the Bible say, and they went out of the prison and entered into the house of Lydia. Christ did not build a material building of brick, mortar, and carpet. No, sir. The Bible say that Christ purchased the church with his blood. Hold Acts 20 and verse 28. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 9 and 10. I'll be there in just a moment. Keep in mind that the word church is derived from two words. The first word is ecclesia. And this word means called out. There's another word that means all are belonging to the Lord. Called out belonging to the Lord. The Congress of the United States is a body of people 
The local city council is a body of people. The local school board is a body of people. So the church is composed of a body of people who have been called out of the world by the gospel of Jesus Christ, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 14, and belonging to Christ by right of purchase or redemption. That's what it is. The Bible says in Acts 20 and verse 28, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and all the flock of the souls and made your overseers to feed the church of God which has purchased with his own blood. In Revelation chapter 5 and verse 9 and 10, the Bible said, And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seal thereof. For thou wast slain, hath redeemed us to God by thy blood, Brother Doom. By thy blood. Thank you, Brother Doom. By thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation made us kings and priests under Oh, I believe you see that. A group of people on the blood-stained banner of Jesus Christ. And the church is referred to as the house of God in 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 15. Bible says, you ought to know to behave yourself. If I tarry long, thou may not behave thyself. And the house of God, which is the church, the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Now let's notice something. The church is referred to as God's house. And we Christians make up that house, not a material building. In Hebrews chapter 3, and beginning at verse 2, the Bible said, Who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. This, this man was counted worthy of no more than Moses, inasmuch as he who had built a house had more honor than the house. For every house is built by some man, but he that buildeth all things of God. Moses built with faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were not. But Christ as a son over his own house, whose house are we. We Christians make up God's house, not a material building. Christ as a son yes, over his own house, right, whose house are we? Yeah. Those individuals who have responded in a positive manner to God's holy mandate and been baptized into Christ under the bloodstained banner of Christ make up the church that Christ purchased with his own blood. Yes, the place was Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Isaiah chapter 2 and verse 2 and 3, the Bible says it's come to pass. In the last days, that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountain, shall be exalted above the hills, all nations shall flow under it. The many people go and say, come, let's go up to the mountain of the Lord's house, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us of his ways. We will walk in his path, for out of Zion shall go forth the Lord, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Amen. I believe you can see that. Zechariah chapter 1 and verse 16 and 17. Behold, thus saith the Lord, I am returned to Jerusalem of mercy. My house shall be built in it, saith the Lord of hosts, and a line shall be stretched forth upon the city of Jerusalem. In Luke chapter 24, and beginning at verse 46, the Bible says, speaking them, saying, And thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer, and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Not Hot Springs, Arkansas, not Memphis, Tennessee, not Oxford, England, not Rome, Italy, but the Bible say beginning at Jerusalem. Then the prophet said something 
about the time of its establishment. I want to hold Mark chapter 9 and verse number 1, Acts chapter 1 and verse number 8, and I'll be there after a while. Let us go back to the Old Testament for just a few moments in the second chapter of the book of Daniel. We understand that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, was a dreamer of dreams. And the Bible said in the second year reign of King Nebuchadnezzar, he had a dream and his sleep was troubled to know what the dream was all about. And the Bible said, call in the astrologers, the shrewd sayers, and the Chaldeans to interpret the dream. All these men came before King Nebuchadnezzar and said, O king, live forever. Make known to us a dream, and we'll give you the interpretation thereof. But Nebuchadnezzar not seeing the thing is gone from me. But unless you make it made known to me, you shall be cut to pieces, and your house become as dung hills. And thus King Nebuchadnezzar sent out a decree that all the wise men of Babylon be killed. But during this time, there was a man of God down there in Babylon in captivity by the name of Daniel. Denison requested the king and said, O king, why is thou decree so hasty? I'll make known your dream along with interpretation thereof. And thus Daniel, his companions inquired of God, and God revealed the dream to them along with interpretation thereof. And Daniel blessed the God of heaven and said the God of heaven that revealeth all secrets. And thus, when he came before King Nebuchadnezzar, he said, O king, thou saw a great image stand before thee, whose brightness was exceeding, had a head of fine gold, had breasts and arms of silver, had belly and thighs of brass, had legs of iron, and feet part iron and part clay. Thou so king, till the rock was cut out without hand, and fell upon the feet of the image, and the silver, the iron, the gold and brass were broken to pieces, and these can became as the summer threshing floors, and the wind came and carried them away that no place were found in the earth for them. He so king, now this is a dream, and the dream thereof is sure, and the thing that shall come to pass in the hereafter. He said, now, O king, thou art a king of kings. The God of heaven have given thee a kingdom, wheresoever men dwell, wheresoever the fowl of the heaven is. The God of heaven have given them thee, and thou art the head of gold. After thee, O king, there shall rise another kingdom in fear to thee, and a third kingdom, and a fourth kingdom. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom, which shall not be left for the people, but shall consume and break in peace all these kingdoms. It will stand forever, or stand until time shall be no more. If we briefly can just give a little historical background on this particular passage, we understand that there have only been four world empires which have had worldwide dominion, but there will never be another as long as the world stands. We understand that Nebuchadnezzar was king of Babylon in 600 B.C. He came represented by a head of gold. That kingdom lasted till about the year of 536 B.C. when it fell to Cyrus and Darius, king of Mede and Persia, and the Mede and Persian king represented by breast and arms of silver. This kingdom lasted till about the year of 330 B.C. Let us and the great swept down upon them and wept because there was no more land for him to conquer. Alexander the Great, he died in 300. And 23 BC, his kingdom was divided between his two generals. You understand that this king represented by belly and thighs of brass. 
this kingdom lasted till approximately 30 BC when Octavius Caesar conquered part of that Grecian Empire and a few years later Pompey, which was a friend of Caesar, conquered the other part of that Grecian Empire, which conquered the Roman Empire. And the Roman Empire was represented by legs of iron and feet part iron and part clay. And the Bible says the iron man not with the clay. That this kingdom would be partly strong and partly weak. And even though it mangled and co mangled itself with men, within this kingdom would be the power of iron. Then the reign of this fourth world empire, the God of heaven was going to set up a kingdom that was not all the other kingdom and would stand until time shall be no more. So we understand in Matthew chapter 3. And beginning at verse 1, the Bible says, In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What days are you talking about? In Luke chapter 3 and verse 1 through 3, the Bible said, Under the 15 year reign of Tiberius Caesar, that these things happened. And thus, after the death of John the Baptist, both Jesus Christ and the disciple by preaching the kingdom has come down to thee it is now at hand and thus we understand Jesus said in Mark chapter 9 and the verses verse number 1 let's see what the Bible said he said unto them fear I send thee there be some of them that stand here which shall not taste death they've seen of a God came to come upon. notice now they shall not taste death until they've seen the kingdom of God come with power and the kingdom and the church is referring to the same institution. Matthew 16, 18, Christ said, I will build my church. And verse 19 said, I'll give you the keys of the kingdom. So it filled the church and power was to come together. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, let's see what the Bible said. But ye shall receive power, after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and shall be witness to me, both to Jerusalem and to death, and Samaria, and to the utmost part of the earth. Now notice now, the kingdom, power, and the Holy Ghost was going to come together. If I can find exactly when the Holy Spirit came, I know exactly when the church became a reality. And thus, in the second chapter of the book of Acts, the Bible, when the day of Pentecost was fully come to the government, one place and one accord, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven, a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. There appeared unto them cloven a divided tongue like the fire, and set up on each of them is all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. Yeah. And the Spirit gave them utterance. And the Bible said there was gathered at Jerusalem Jew devout men out of every nation yeah. under heaven. When this thing went not the brought the broad, the mother two came together and they were confounded and said, What means this? No, these we speak Galilean. How every man speak in our own tongue. Wherein we were born, he said, Pontians, Medes, Elamites, and dwellers of Mesopotamia, Judah, Cappadocia, Polynesia, Persia, and Pamphylia, out of Egypt, left the box of rings, strange Rome, Jews, and proselytes, priests, and ravens, do hear them speak in our own tongue the wonderful works of God. And others began to moke, saying, These men are full of new wine. We are standing up with eleven, not a hundred and twenty, but standing with eleven. So these men are not drunken, as as ye suppose who went the third hour of the day or just nine o'clock in the morning. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. It shall come to pass in the last day, said God. I will pour out my spirit with all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Old men dream, dream, young vision. I pour my spirit and they shall prophesy. I shall sign them with the blood one let bleed blood and fire. And they before the great noble day of the Lord shall come, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Got to save some time now. He began to talk about the patriarch David, how it both dead and buried, the separate of withers until this day. But David and the prophet spake 
of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Then peace let all the house of Israel know certainly that that same Jesus, he may take him by the wicked hand before the determinate council and for not of God, you crucified him and slain him. God will not suffer his flesh eruption nor leave his soul in hell, but raised him up from the dead and made him both Lord and Christ. And the Bible when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Yeah. And thus Peter said, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promise unto you and your children all that are far off even as many as the Lord our God shall call. When many other words of Peter test of an exalt saying, save yourselves from the sort of one generation and they that gladly, not madly, but they that gladly receive received his word were baptized and the same day were added about 3,000 souls. Acts 2 and verse 47 the Bible say praising God having favor with all the people and the Lord added to the church daily such as said be saved of those who were saved. My friend if anything is said about the church for reference of the Pentecost is spoken of as something in the future. Yes. But on that day never happened in actual existence Oh, yes, friend, the church had a beginning on the first Pentecost for the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And then, my friend, it wears the right name. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, yes. yes sir. Do you not know that when we stand before God in the judgment, the Lord will be able to identify his foe by the name? Yes, Revelation chapter 9, and start reading at verse 1, for Revelation 22 and verse 4 and 5, and I'll read that to a while. I'm going to show you something, friend. Some people ain't looking at no name. Do you not know it were not the name you couldn't go home tonight? Yes, sir. You couldn't go home. You live in a certain state, in a certain city within that state, in a certain county, and on a certain street. Yes, sir. By knowing the state, the city or town, the county, and the street, and the address, you can go home. Yes, sir. When I went out the name, you couldn't do that. Huh? Oh, I believe you see that. Bible of Revelation chapter 9 began reading at verse number 1. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star from heaven unto the earth. And him were given the keys of the bottomless pit. Open the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. Sun and air were darkened by reading the smoke of the pit. Read, came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. Under them was given power at the scorpion of the earth of power. Read, and them that they should not hurt grass of the earth, need any green thing, need any tree, but only, but only those men would have not the seal of God in their forehead. To them were given, they should not kill them. They should be tormented five months, and that torment of the scorpion when he strikes the man. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it. They shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. Five, they thought they have not the seal of God in their foot. Bible say they shall seek death and shall not find it. They shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. Yep. Let's find out what the seal is, Brother Dooley. Revelation chapter 22 and verse 3 and 4. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God of the Lamb shall be in it. Notice now, notice now, he doesn't say the service of another, but his service shall serve him. And they, his servant, shall see his face, and his name shall be in their forehead. Suppose the Lord's name isn't there. You say, well, don't make no difference. I don't think so. You're in trouble. Friend, the Lord's church wears the Lord's name just like every woman honor her husband in wearing his name. The church honors Christ in wearing the name of Christ. And I'm going to prove that tomorrow night. I'm going to prove tomorrow night that God had a wife and divorced her because she become unfaithful. Yes, sir. That's right. Don't prove it. Beyond, bring your Bible. Prove it beyond any shadow of a doubt that God had to divorce his wife because she became unfaithful. All right. 
Right. Amen. Yeah. Bring them. But I'm going to show you the church where Christ, you honor Christ in the way. But I'm going to tell you something, friend. Some of them, Brother David, have you always been in the church of Christ? No. Many of you here haven't, haven't always been in the church of Christ. I was brought up in a church they call Methodist because it does things by methods. That's right. John and Charles Wesley were taught and attending Oxford University. They had a method of doing things different from all the other students on the campus. So they started what was known as a Methodist society. And how the discipline here says that in the beginning Wesley and his fellows had no thought of constituting the church but simply forming a society. Huh? And then they decided that some of their comrades who came to them for counseling, they decided they would start them a church. Now even though John and Charles Wesley were members of the Anglican church, they had to go through the Catholic church to get a charter because the Catholic church was in power and the Catholic church would not grant them a charter unless they put in that creed that they believed in the Holy Catholic Church. Every Sunday morning, they open it with the Apostles' Creed, I believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. And now some of the modern literature is I believe in the church universal, but he's still talking about the Catholic Church. Out of 17, it says, such a society of believers being within the Methodist church and subject to its discipline, which in the Apostles' Creed, we declare to be the Holy Catholic Church. Uh huh? huh? Then he said, a man is justified by faith only that this is a most wholesome doctrine and very full of comfort, but it's only comfort of those who doesn't know any better. See, faith only, only one time in the Bible, James chapter 2 and verse 24, is it seeing that by works a man is justified and not, and not by faith only. Then it three, teaches three modes of baptism. See, now I, had a, I had an uncle who was a presiding elder in the Methodist church. My grandfather was a pastor stood. My grandmother was head of the student's board. I was a junior stood. Hmm? Worked with the Sunday School Department, the AC League, and a class leader for class number three. Well, right, oh, I'm telling you, I, I was a oh, yeah, that's right. And I'll tell you another thing, the church I was in, if Christ had tried to get in, he would have been clubbed and voted out. Because with every kind of club and vote, you named it, and we claimed it. Uh -huh. That's right. Sprinkling never have been used as baptism to save anybody. Amen. I'm talking of water. Amen. You know, a lot of people will run to, I, I found a fellow one time that stayed in my house a whole half a day with Ezekiel 36, 25. I will sprinkle clean water upon you. You shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols. Will I cleanse you? Let me tell you something. It wasn't in the water sprinkle on them. Somebody looking at me funny. Turn to Numbers 19 real right quick. I'm going to show that it wasn't water. Water never have been sprinkling in the body to save them. Numbers 19, start reading at verse number 1 right quick that far. And it also teaches that a baby is born in sin. That's right. So totally deprived. Huh? And you know, they used to, our, our brethren used to go to Psalm 51 5. But boy, they, got, they learned better now. They whipped him down on that. They don't go there no more. For David said, Behold, I was shaping in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Didn't say he was born in sin. Hmm? Hold that Psalm 58 and 3. I'll be there after a while. All right, Numbers 19, Brother Maxwell. The Lord spake unto, Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, day. saying, This is the ordinance, this is the ordinance of the Lord. Which the Lord, hath the Lord commanded, day. saying, Speak unto the, speak children, unto the children of Israel, that they bring, that they bring thee a red, a red heifer, heifer without spot, without spot where is no blemish, but which never came yoke. And ye shall give, ye shall give it to the disease of the priest. And he bring, bring up forth without the camp. camp 
and one, one shall slay her before his face. Before his face. Are, the, priest the priest shall take of her blood, of her blood with his finger and sprinkle, and sprinkle, of, sprinkle blood of her blood directly, directly before the, the tabernacle of the congregation seven, seven times. And one shall, one shall burn the heifer in his sight, the skin, 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 her flesh, her blood, blood her dung, dung also shall he burn. And the priest shall, and the priest cedar shall take cedar wood and hyssop and scarlet and cast the midst of the burning of the heifer. Now, to save time, oh, skip down to verse number nine to save some time. And a man that is clean shall gather up the ashes of the heifer, lay them up without the camp in a clean place. It shall be kept for the congregation of the children of Israel for a what? A water of separation. It was ashes. A water. The Bible say those ashes will be kept in a clean place. Will be used as a water of separation. It's a purification for sin. All right. Mm -hmm. Wasn't water, but ashes. Now let's notice something. They usually run to Psalm 58 and 3, but they stop too quick. What does the Bible say? The wicked, the wicked are strained from the wound. And he stops. Whoa, whoa. Stop. He stops right there. But the Bible say they go. How many places have you ever known a baby to go? Hmm? The Bible says they go astray as soon as, soon as they're born. They go and speak a lot. Baby can't even talk. <laughs> that sure wasn't talking about no baby. Right. Okay. He said they go astray speaking lies. Who yeah. oh, I believe you can see that. The Bible nowhere teaches that a baby is born in sin. Right. Right. I one more before I close tonight. Now, you know what we're saying? We're saying because we love you. Here's a book here, Brother Maxwell. Now, what's the title of that book? Uh, the Standard Manual of Baptist Churches. Now, now that means I didn't write it, is it right? right? I didn't write it. Yeah. Turn to page 154, and I want them to ask me just a few questions, and I'm going to take the Bible and their book and answer that question. I'm not going to ask anything. You think I'm being unfair? I'm not asking anything. Let them ask us some questions. All right, All right page 154. It is sometimes asked, when and where did the Baptists originate? Who were their founders? What is their history? You know why they're questions of interest? Because your soul is at stake. The answers to these questions could determine where you will spend eternity. Hmm? These are questions of interest. But a more important one would be, uh, they, that's what you want to know, yes, sir. whether or not it's right. Now, I'm going to show how fair I am. If it's right, regardless of what anybody says, you stay there. Yes, sir. Right. If it's right. But on the other hand, if it's proven wrong, what ought you to do? You ought to make a move tonight. If it's proven wrong, you ought to make a move tonight. Now, you may have been honest up to this point, but if you leave here tonight out of Christ, if we point out whether this thing is right or wrong, you're no longer honest. You become dishonest. The Bible says, what is a man's profit if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? And what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Read on, Brother Maxwell. Is there, is there faith according to the teaching of the New Testament? Testament? I wish I had time to go on down, but I won't have time for all that. But turn to page 168. The question was asked, it is sometimes asked, when and where did the Baptists originate? Who were their founders? What is their history? Now, you know, I have a Bible up here on the stand, and I can read this Bible from Genesis to Revelation, and I will not find the history and the organizers and founders of the Baptist Church. And the reason I can't find it in here, but I can use ain't now, can't I? It just ain't here in here. Well, it just isn't here, friends. It's not in here. That's why we're not finding it. So since we can't find it in the Bible, I'd have to let them tell us, won't we? Since they asked, a 116. At the top of the page? Yeah, top of the page. Okay. Um, 168, at the top of the page. The first book published in the English language on the subject of baptism. Do not what said, the history of the Baptist Church. And bears date, 1680. What, Go down what's the history of the Baptist Church. From this time. Go down what's the history of the Baptist Church. The history of American Baptists. All right. 
runs back, run back a little more than two and a quarter centuries. What? Two and a quarter centuries. The church that Jesus built is about 2,000 years old. He said the history of the American Baptist runs back a little more than two and a quarter centuries. That's a little over 225 years. In this country, as elsewhere. Roger Williams, at the top of the page, Roger Williams, Roger Williams a distinguished and honored name, was the, with the rise of numbers in America. in America. He has been called our founder because he organized the first church and was intimately connected with the early history. William was born in Wales in 1598, educated at Oxford, England, came to America in 1630 and settled his ministry to the Puritan Church of Salem, Massachusetts. In Salem, Massachusetts. Not long after he adopted Baptist, Baptist views and doctrine of him, on account of which he was banished by fellow Puritans and driven out of Massachusetts. In 1639, Mr. Reem received back the one of associate, that his associate was Ezekiel Hardiman. There being no minister that performed that service, he in turn back to the associate and the church was organized. That's the very first Baptist church in 1639 in Providence, Rhode Island. But the church that Jesus built started in Jerusalem. And Jesus was the founder, but this book said Roger Williams was its founder. Then they said, is there faith according to the teaching of the New Testament? On page 20 in Article 8, it says, but do turn to Mark 16, 16 right quick for me. Page 20, Article 8, brother. Baptism, Baptism is not essential to salvation. Is not essential to salvation. For our church is utterly repudiated. Our church is utterly repudiated the dogma. The baptism of a generation. But it's central obedience because Christ commanded. Now let's notice how he meets himself coming back. He says, Baptism is not essential to salvation. For our churches utterly repudiate the dogma of baptismal regeneration. You know the average lay member don't know what he's talking about? I talk with a lot. They don't know what the man is saying. What he's saying is, we repudiate the idea that baptism has anything whatsoever to do with one being saved. That's what they're saying. Read that again, Brother Maxwell. Baptism is not essential to... But do look, what's the Bible saying? He that believe it and is baptized shall be saved. But, but read that again. Baptism is not essential to salvation. What did Jesus say, brother? He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Now who are you going to believe? <laughs> Jesus says, he that believeth and is baptized yeah. shall be saved. Uh -huh. Now in that passage, we have both a passive verb and an active verb. Yeah. <laughs> Both a passive and an active verb. He that believeth and is baptized is what is known as the complex subject. With he being the simple subject and he is mortified by limited and restrictive clause that believeth and is baptized. Who's going to be saved? Not the one that just believed. Not the one that just is baptized. Belief is nothing of his own. Baptism is of his own, but he put the coordinated conjunction and a copulated conjunction in which join words or phrase of equal grammatical ring. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. All right, preacher. That's right. All right. Anything that will save me is the same of my salvation. Bible says in Acts 2 3, baptism is for the forgiveness of sin. Anything remit my sins is the same of my salvation. Acts 22, 16, that baptism, my sins are washed away. And the thing that washed my sins away is the saint of my salvation. Galatians, turn to page 22, where he said it is most likely that in the apostolic age, when there was but one Lord, one faith, and one baptism, and no different denominations exist, the baptism of a convert by that day act, become a member of the church, and at once endowed it with all the rights and privileges of full membership. In that sense, baptism was the church. Baptism was the door. Yeah, preacher. The Bible still says the door. 
Galatians 3, 26 and 7, we are the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Yeah. For many men baptized in the Christ to put on Christ. The Bible still says we're baptized in the Christ. The Baptist says not so. Well, who gave them the authority to change? Uh -huh. All right. Hmm? Read a little farther there. Now, now it is different. And while, while the churches are desirous of receiving members, they're wearing courses. They do not receive unworthy persons. Hold it right there. All the people in this audience who are worried, they hold up your hands. All those worthy folk. Christ died for the unworthy. The Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Grace is receiving something undeservedly. That's why I'm in town to baptize all those unworthy folk that the Baptist folk don't want. They say they don't want so. If you're unworthy, they turn it down the folk for whom Christ died. Christ died for them. And they say they're wearing courses that they do not, they do not receive unworthy people. Tell preacher. Friend, that's why we're here. That's why the church had me here. The churches of Dallas had me here to baptize all these unworthy, un unworthy folk that the Baptist folk turned down and don't want. That's, all right, that's why the gospel is being preached. That's all right. Amen. To the, ch the church, therefore, have candidates kind of come before them, make that statement of their experience, and that reception decided by the vote of the members. My friend, anything the majority votes you in, that same majority can vote you out. And anything you're voted in is in the church that Jesus Christ built. And anything that you join is in the church that Jesus built. Amen. There are three things that may be joined. That's a fraternal organization, a club, hmm? uh -huh. and denominational churches. Uh -huh. <laughs> but nobody ever won't join the Lord's church. Amen. The Lord add the same yes, to his church. Tonight, friend, you've heard the word. Acts 15, 7. You can sit right there and believe the same with all of your heart. Hebrew 11 and 6. Sat right there, turn from everything that's contrary to God's will. Luke 13, 3 and 5. Confess that Jesus Christ is God's Son. Matthew 10 and verse 32. And then be buried with the Lord in water baptism for the forgiveness of sin the Lord Jesus Christ will add you to his church and if you just remain faithful till death heaven be yours to enjoy and after a while beyond this veil of tears we understand that David after he lost his son born to Bathsheba David was able to write the 23rd Psalm and thus David said the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in path of rightness for his name's sake. He said, Yea, if I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thy prepare the table before in the prayer of many men. I anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. But my friend, Jesus Christ uh, is everything to me yes, from A to Z. He's my A because he's my Alpha and my Omega. He's my B because he's my burden bearer. He's my C because he cares. He's my D because he is my deliverer. He's my E because he's everlasting. He's my F because he's my fortress. He's my G because he's my God. He's my H because he's my help in time of trouble. 
He's my I because he's interested in my welfare. He's my J because he's the joy of my life. He's my K because he's always kind. He's my L because he's always loving. He's my M because he's merciful. He's my N because there's no one like him. He's my O because he's omnipotent. He's omniscient and omnipresent. He's my P because he's always present with me. He might cue because he never quit loving me. Every once in a while, Brother Winston, old NL stumble and fall along the way, but the Lord never quit loving me. So he might err because he oh, never quit loving me in spite of my shortcoming. He might err because he's reserving a place for me in the Father's house. He might ask because he's my Savior. He's my T because he's my time clock. He woke me up this morning on time. He might you because he can use a poor feeble fella like me in his service. He might be because I can be victorious over death through him. He might be because he's my way maker and he's the water of life. He might ex because he's my x-ray machine. He knows my every thought. He my why because he's my yesterday, my day and the day and tomorrow. He my z because always that just of all my ways of Christ is everything to me from A to Z. Yes, my friend, you can obey him tonight. He's pleading right now. Amen. Why not come right now? He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will hear my voice and open up, I'll come with him. I'll come in and sup with him. And he will be pleading right now. While we're together stand and sing, why not come right now? Right. Come from the lost of one time who was rich and uh, some way or the other she committed a crime and <coughs> lawyer went to her and said lady I'd like to represent you in court she said I'm rich I don't need no lawyer I don't need no he went back two or three times she said lady you're gonna need a lawyer I don't need no lawyer I'm rich I don't need no lawyer but you know when the trial came up on the docket and the judge began to instruct everybody. She recognized she needed a lawyer. And she walked up to him and said, Sir, you came several times and talked to me, but I didn't feel that I needed a lawyer. Then now I need a lawyer. He said, Lady, when I talked with you, I could have been your lawyer, but today I'm your judge. <laughs> See, today Christ can be your lawyer, but at the judgment, he's going to be your judge. You can make the choice tonight, but the judgment, you won't make the choice. He'll make the choice. And the choice he makes then and there could be determined by the choice you make tonight. Amen. This may be the last opportunity you'll ever have to make things right with God. Amen. You need to come right now while we sing the next verse of this song. Why not? The brethren down there there to encourage you and to walk with you. If you just walk out to the aisle, they'll walk down the aisle with you. Amen. All right, brother, another verse of them. Come to the shelter, save me. Father, 
Swami.